Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley starting a business, building a brand blog. This one, big number, 279. So there was one business question that was so good, so good, that I gotta talk about it. I gotta talk about it a lot today, um, and I'm gonna make that the primary focus of today's video, and that is all about building your network, because as you've heard, your network is your net worth. I don't know who said that, it wasn't me, but it sounds good, and I believe it. All right, so the question is from, our friend out there, he says, hey Alpha, how's it going? Just started out on the path of being an entrepreneur and grew up in a poor family also. And I totally get it when you say you don't get exposed to the types of things money-wise. Um, I've often said that one of the downsides of growing up poor is that you don't have access to people around you talking about money. And with money, it is an education process. You know, everything from interest rates to investing to what you do with it, you know, it, it's an education. And if you're blue collar, or you're lower blue collar, or you're poor, there's nobody around you that's talking about the importance of a 401k or investing or starting young and compounding interest and all that good stuff, all right? So it's one of the downsides. You gotta learn that on your own if you are in that situation. And hopefully not make a ton of mistakes in the process like I have. Anyway, he says, uh, there was a higher tax break, get exposed to grow. Okay, you said a couple of weeks ago, your network is your net worth. Where does someone go to develop a good network? I've looked a bit online, but all I keep finding are groups that post lots of positive sounding content, but have no useful substance. Um, if you could share some suggestions on how to develop a good network online and in a person, a person or an in person post COVID, that would be awesome. Thanks for all the useful content, Mark. Mark. This is such an amazing, absolutely amazing question. And it's a question that I could not have answered, uh, what was it, like eight years ago, before I met Antonio Centeno. So let me tell you a little bit about how I developed my network. And then I'm gonna give you a few tips that I would use or that I have lived by up until this point that has helped me sort of develop that network. Because the one thing and the reason why having a valuable network, or not just valuable, a network that is, is the, right or the right type of people as opposed to hanging out with your loser friends. And when I say loser, I don't ever mean that they're bad people, but if you are somebody that wants to be successful and you wanna do something amazing, you've gotta surround yourself with people that are going to be your cheerleaders, also uplifting, that are inspirational. But if you are around people that are kinda of drinking all the time and partying, they're gonna bring you down to their level as opposed to lift you up, all right? You gotta be surrounded by people that are going to lift you up and inspire you. The other thing about a network is that if you ever need help, whether or not it's professionally, financially, just somebody to talk to that gets it, they're gonna be there for you. And when I was starting out on my entrepreneurial journey, you know, the one thing that you're gonna realize is that it is lonely. It can be very lonely because you don't have friends necessarily at this point when you're starting that get it, that understand, that are on the same trajectory or path or have the same goal. You know, so for me, when I started being an entrepreneur and I was having like really hard times, I really couldn't go to my friends that were working, you know, nine to five jobs that had a 401k that were sort of, you know, not doing the things that I was doing. And so it was a very lonely road. A lot of things that I was going through I didn't have anybody really to talk to. So what I would do is that I would talk to my wife about certain things, but I wouldn't burden her with things that were hard because I didn't want her to worry, right? So I'd always be going to her and saying, hey, isn't this amazing? Isn't this awesome? Isn't this going to be incredible? And she came to me one day, she goes, you're always so excited about all sorts of things. It's hard for me to match you in terms of excitement all the time because you've got so many things going on. And so at that point, I kind of shut down a little bit. I'm like, well, I don't want to, I don't wanna always you know, need somebody to say, hey, great job, well done. But I also didn't wanna, like I said, burden her with things that were hard or things that I was going through because I didn't want her to worry. I wanted to be that rock, I wanted to be stoic. And so I was lost and it was very lonely. And then one day, Antonio Centeno, this is probably eight or nine years ago, reached out to me and said, hey, I'm going to Anaheim, California to actually go to this conference, it was VidCon, would you be interested in coming, meeting me, and then maybe we could have like some conference for some of the other people in the space of men's lifestyle? 
And at that point in my life, in my mindset as an entrepreneur was either I'm winning or you're losing. I viewed everybody as competition. And as my competition, I didn't want to talk to you. I didn't want to hang out with you. I didn't want to associate with you because in my mind, I was either winning or you were winning. And if you were winning, that meant I was losing. And so I thought about it. I'm like, I don't know, you know, is this guy, is this guy for real? He ended up being for real. And so I decided to roll the dice and take a chance. And that's the first thing I would like to tell you. If you are looking to build your network, whether or not it's professionally or personally, you've got to be willing to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. I was way uncomfortable. I don't like traveling. I don't like new people. It was scary for me. And I knew that this was something that was definitely outside of my comfort zone and box. But I decided, you know what? What the hell is the worst thing that happened? He sounded like he was for real. And so we ended up putting this thing together. We went out there and then we ended up having the first Men Influential Conference. And it had like 60 or 70 people. From that point, from that moment, my life changed. The trajectory of myself professionally, but also personally, everything got better. I was amongst my people. For the first time in my life, I was surrounded by other people that were hungry, other people that were driven and motivated. And these people became not only my network, some of them became my absolute best friends. I found my tribe, people that I wanted to be around, people that got it, people that inspired me, people that pushed me to be better, people that made me think about things that I wasn't thinking about before. It was the point in my life that everything started to escalate, everything started to scale. Professionally, personally, I felt amazing because for the first time, I had people that I could talk to about the things that as an entrepreneur, I was dealing with, but at the time, I was too scared because I was worried that they were going to steal something from me. And since then, everything has gotten better in my life, like I said. And that is something that when you find that group of people, that tribe, you gotta hold on to them and you've gotta use them to not only lift yourself, but also help uplift them and get everybody to like raise up. They say a rising, what is it? A rising tide lifts all ships. The other thing about your network guys, they are there not only to inspire you and uplift you, but to help you if you need it. I could literally go to Antonio and say, Antonio, I need a kidney. Now, he's one of my best friends, and so he might be like, all right, I'll, I'll give you a kidney maybe, but there's definitely gonna be some interest attached. Um, but you know what I'm saying. It's all about having people that would do anything for you, or at least help you. And that brings me to the next thing I'd like to tell you to do, and that is be nice to everybody. I'm not saying that I like everybody, but I'm nice to everybody because you never know. You never know when you may need something from somebody. And when you go around burning bridges or, or being a jerk or if people don't like you because you're rude or ignorant or you've stolen from them, the chance of them helping you is like zero. My grandfather, who I'm gonna reference twice in this video, is one of my heroes. He was one of the people that in my life when I was growing up, he was that rock of the family and I, I love him with all my heart. Anyway, he was one of the inspirational people in my life. There are three men in my life that I consider to be pivotal. That is my wrestling coach. These are in no order. My grandfather and my father. Those three men changed my life and the trajectory of my life. Anyway, he said, he had a saying that said, I can get along with anybody I wanna get along with. And what that means essentially, think about that for a second. You can get along with anybody you wanna get along with. It doesn't mean that the person is a great person. It doesn't mean that you have to agree with them, but if you wanna get along with them, you can get along with them. You don't need to go to Christmas dinners with them if you don't want to, but you can get along with them. Too often we burn bridges or we see something that happens and we're like, screw you, I don't wanna be your friend, I don't wanna do whatever, I'm gonna speak my mind and I'm just gonna feel better once I'm done burning that bridge, right? Which brings me to a second thing that he has told me, and that is you either feed your ego or your family. Think about that. You either feed your ego or your family. And in business, that is a very, 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 very important thing to wrap your brain around. You either are gonna be right and feel good about the fact that you showed them, or whatever it is, or you're going to be quiet, suck it up, do what you need to do because your financial prosperity and your ability to feed your family and be successful depends on it. The amount of times that I have shut my mouth, even though I would love to metaphorically punch somebody in the face and never deal with them again, like it's been a lot, right? We all have had situations like that, but you've got to, as an entrepreneur, keep it, push it down, deal with it, 
so that you don't actually burn that bridge. You know, there are people throughout my YouTube career and business career, there have been people that I have helped out that I, see, and that's the thing. For me, it's all about helping out people. Help out the little guy, you know, because we all were little guys at one point and we may be little guys again. And you never know when an act of kindness or generosity or help to people that can't actually help you at this point or you don't need them right now, when you're nice to them and you do something to help them or uplift them, I've helped a lot of people out. And that's my character, that's my nature, that's what I enjoy doing. And I've said this before, you know, what I feel and truly believe success is for me now that I realize is helping other people. There's no better feeling that you get. And there's no better way to build your network, build your camaraderie, build goodwill with other people, whether or not it's professionally or personally, like helping somebody out, helping somebody that can't necessarily do anything for you right now other than be grateful, it's incredibly powerful. And that is one of the reasons why I've been able to build my network is because I've helped a lot of people without ever asking anything in return. And that's the thing, you've gotta be willing to give without expecting something in return. Because when you expect or when you do something for somebody and expect something in return, that's when, A, you're gonna be disappointed because chances are they are going to disappoint you and it's not going to come to fruition, but it's also not the right mentality to have. You've gotta be able and have the compassion and ability to help people even when there's not something necessarily in it for you other than that good feeling. Now in the future, you may need them, but in terms of, of now, you don't, but help them. In terms of where to go to find people to start networking with, that's all over the board. It really depends on you and your situation. I do agree with you that a lot of these like groups on like Facebook and different forums, forums are definitely um, you know, a lot of inspiration, but in terms of real value, I'm not sure. I would though keep your eyes open and look, if there's somebody or a group of people that are doing things that you wanna do, definitely follow them, start interacting with them and reach out to them if you want to. I mean, there are all sorts of different ways or methods to actually connect with people that are going to help you build your network. Like I said, just be nice to people. That is the first step. Guys, if you have a recommendation on how to start building your network, down below in the comments, please start it with network building and give your advice, give any links that you may have. I think this could be a really cool like resource for other people. Any ideas, none are stupid, so down in the comments, let us know. Speaking of not stupid, there are a few quick business questions that I wanna dive into now. The next business question, I'm gonna try and blast through these fairly fast because I'm running low on time. I got a Tiege Hanley meeting in literally 15 minutes. Uh, the next question is from our friend Sean C. He says, is transformational leadership or transactional leadership best in hospitality? General transformational would be the answer. They want short-term results. All right, so the difference between transformational leadership and transactional leadership is essentially transformational leadership is all about helping people that follow you or your employees or staff basically share a vision. It's all about inspiring and uplifting them. Transactional is more like results oriented. Of course, the answer is transformational, but unfortunately, a lot of times this is something that takes a lot more time and it's a cultural thing. It's all about that corporate culture. Does your corporate culture at the top have that mindset or is it more transfer, transactional? And if the answer is it's transactional, they have results, they've got numbers, they want processes hit and matched and you gotta do it or else you're in trouble. There's no changing that, honestly, until the top changes. It's a top down type of thing. And so if you are somebody in the hospitality industry and you wanna work for an organization that has a more shared vis vision or is more transformational, you're probably in the wrong place or wrong job or wrong company, but it's worth looking for somebody that might share your vision or a company that does inspire people more than the company that you're actually working with. Now, none of them do. It's your job to actually fix it possibly. And so that requires you to climb that corporate ladder quickly. Man, there are so many like great business questions. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm running short on time. I literally have 10 minutes before my meeting starts and I don't wanna, they're, they're, the questions deserve a better answer than I will give you if I do them now. So here's what I want you to do. Guys, if you have a business question, start it with business question, 
ask it down below. If I didn't get to your business question from last vlog, copy and paste it in this vlog. And next week, I'm gonna make the, the, the vlog all about your business questions and sort of go through them like rapid fire. There was even an incredible question from our friend Rusty Shackelford about Enemy. When I launched Enemy, my sunglass company, the price at launch was $150. And then quickly, like by the end of the weekend, I dropped my price to 100. How did I do that? Why did I do that? Um, I will answer that, Rusty, if you ask it again. Also, there are a lot of other amazing business questions. And so guys, next week, it's all about your business questions. So copy and paste the question from last vlog into this vlog, and I'll go through like rapid fire and make the entire vlog about your questions. I will not monopolize it with a single topic. Guys, I gotta run. We love you more than our double long strap shoes. Remember, be nice to people, all right? Even if they can't do anything, help them out because you never know when you may need those people. The other thing, remember, you either feed your ego or your family. My question to you is which one do you pick?